going to tell you about you toss fish first. Trout fish eat small fish and insects and other things second. Um, common carp eat small fish and insects and other vertebrates. Third, um, bigger fish eat smaller fish which eat smaller and smaller things. So they will pretty much, anything they can catch, they'll eat. Um, so they eat a lot of insects. Um, they'll come up to the top of the water and nab them off the top. Or um, they will uh, find them in the water if they're big enough, if they're over a foot long, the uh, trout. Um, they will sometimes eat small fish even. And it's just whatever they can catch. <laughs> Some fish feed on the surface, others feed on the bottom. For example, Carp feeds on the surface as well as chow. Others like catfish will feed wherever as long as they get their food. Um, they actually will feed anywhere in the pond. Um, they do have the little whiskers on their face, um, help them detect things that are along the bottom of the pond. They spend a lot of time down there, but they will find anywhere they can find food, they'll eat it. So they like, they'll take any opportunity to eat something. <laughs> I'm going to tell you about spawning. Spawning is when fish lay eggs. Like common carp spawn two to three feet deep in shallow water in the spring. Rainbow trout spawn in, in, in the spring, usually from March to May. Channel catfish spawn in spring or summer, 70 to 84 degrees. So they lay eggs around in the springtime, which is when most fish lay their eggs. Um, and they know how when it's time because the water levels in the river rise a lot because of all the snow melting, and so they know then it's time to lay their eggs. Birds in Utah care for the young in many different ways. However, pinion jays will sometimes eat their own chicks for survival, but other birds like crows, larks, robins, etc. will protect their chicks fiercely. They might even kill a human to protect them. They care for the young in many different ways, but those are just a few of them. Um, so from what I could find, I didn't find any that were nest parasites in the sense that they put their eggs in other species of birds' nests, but frequently ducks will lay their eggs in um, the same species, like the same kind of duck. They will lay their eggs in other nests so that they don't have to do less work and it helps them out um, in the end. So sometimes ducks and a few other like water birds like that, that'll happen. Most birds don't eat all the food, food they collect daily but store it for later. Some birds eat the same types of food but most birds don't. For example, pinion jays eat seeds and red-tailed hawks eat other reptiles. They eat very similar types of food. Um, pinion jays are actually named after a type of pine tree that they eat the seeds from and they'll eat the seeds from lots of different kinds of pine trees, not just the pinion pine, also the ponderosa. Um, and they also eat lots of insects and other invertebrates, so insects, spiders, uh, caterpillars, and magpies will eat that as well. Um, the difference is that magpies often will eat lots of different kinds of grains, not just the seeds from the pine trees, and they also will eat carrion, which is uh, dead animals that they find. So like roadkill, magpies will take advantage of that, whereas pinion jays wouldn't do that. Some birds migrate or fly south and others don't. I'm going to tell you about some of Utah's birds and how they survive the winter. A lot of birds in Utah migrate. For example, red-tailed hawks, larks, robins, and magpies. Two of Utah's birds that don't migrate are the barn owl and the pinion jay. They stay because they have warmer feathers. There's actually dozens of birds um, that migrate in Utah, um, all kinds of them. But my personal favorite is actually the bald eagle. During the winter, they come down from the north um, in Canada and Alaska, where it's too cold and there's you know everything's frozen over. And they come down to Utah, where it's a little less frozen, and they'll uh, lay their eggs, and then they fly back up north with uh, the young eagles 
once the spring rolls around. I'm going to tell you about Utah mammals. Utah mammals live in holes called dens. Their dens help them stay warm during the winter. For example, woodchucks, skunks, river otters, prairie dogs, foxes, and coyotes, as well as many other Utah mammals. So a lot of animals, mammals specifically, they will store fat in their body. They'll um, eat lots and lots of food during the summer and um, during the fall, and they'll create fat stores in their body um, that will help them out. They also will grow thicker coats um, that they'll then shed in the spring, um, but they will, uh, they'll have a thicker coat, and some even with that coat that they grow, um, it'll actually be different colors. Um, so certain types of foxes and um, birds actually too, I know you guys are looking at mammals, but they'll, um, they'll grow fur or feathers that are better suited for blending in during the winter than during the summer. I'm going to tell you about hibernating. Hibernating is where animals go to sleep for a whole season. Some Utah mammals that hibernate are bears, groundhogs, white-tailed prairie dogs, and ground squirrels. Um, they do, so there's kind of two kinds of hibernation. There's what's called torpor, which is what we think of with bears, where they will wake up, they'll eat something, they'll go back to sleep. Um, and then there's true hibernation, which is more often found in amphibians and reptiles, where they will do the total metabolism slowdown that I was talking about before, where they, um, they like their breathing slows down, their heart rate slows down. For mammals, it's more, um, it is more like they'll wake up, they'll eat something. Um, some mammals don't even hibernate at all if they're able to find food during the winter, like deer don't hibernate, um, they'll just kind of eat like the bark off of things. Um, so, but things that do hibernate frequently if they're mammals, they go into torpor, which is a, a less of a hibernation, it's not as deep of a sleep. The Rocky Mountain elk migrate to lower elevations in the winter time. They eat twigs and tree bark, and they migrate to higher elevations in the summer, and they eat grass, tree leaves, and bush leaves. The Utah, the Utah State Mammal is the Rocky Mountain Elk. Um, Utah animals that migrate are usually ones that live in herds. So you think of buffalo, you think of bighorn sheep, um, there's deer. They all kind of move in between southern Idaho and Utah. Um, they'll kind of, they won't migrate too far. They don't go like, you know, enormous stretches all throughout America or anything, but they will, um, across the state, they'll migrate a little bit. Um, but then like smaller mammals will hibernate like uh, rabbits or mice. Um, and then usually if they are small predators, like foxes, um, they will continue to be awake and they'll continue to hunt for the animals that are actually in hibernation. Reptiles like lizards or turtles have rough skin and have scales. Amphibians like salamanders have smooth and slimy skin. It's actually mucus, and mucus is what bookers are made of. So reptiles and amphibians have a couple of similarities. They both breathe air using lungs, they both lay eggs, um, but they also are different in that reptiles spend most of their time on land and amphibians are mostly in the water. Um, the amphibians uh, also, because they spend a lot of time in the water, their skin is very soft, they don't have scales like reptiles do. Um, and their eggs are much more, they're much softer. Uh, reptiles usually have leathery eggs and they lay those on land and amphibians usually lay theirs in the water. Reptiles eat other animals, but reptiles and amphibians both eat insects. Amphibians eat algae and plants that grow in the water. So neither of those species can actually breathe underwater in their adult stages. So amphibians do, do go through metamorphosis, that's another difference between reptiles and amphibians. Um, but they will, uh, so when they're tadpoles, uh, amphibians can breathe underwater using gills, but once they reach the adult stage as a frog or a salamander, 
um, they no longer breathe underwater, and so they can't really breathe underwater, but they can hold their breath underwater depending on the species for varying amounts of time. It just kind of depends. Reptiles lay hard eggs on land, amphibians lay soft eggs in water. Amphibians lay their eggs in water, while reptiles lay their eggs on shore. When the babies are born, amphibians' babies start out as limbless little fish, called tadpoles. Reptiles' babies are miniature of their grown selves. Um, they actually are pretty similar, even though they have different uh, ways of taking care of their young. So we have the amphibians will lay eggs in the water and reptiles on land, but they usually will keep an eye on the nests until they hatch. And then once they've hatched, um, the adults will just kind of leave. <laughs> and then the uh, tadpoles or the um, baby lizards or reptiles, I should say, they're not say lizards, but they will kind of, they're on their own at that point out. They survive the winter by finding a nice little insulated spot like a hole in the ground or a hole like in a wall or in a tree, something that is protected from the cold um, and they will actually go into hibernation so their heartbeat slows down, their um, digestive system slows down, their lungs slow down, all of that, their whole metabolism, so it's called, they, it all slows down and that way they can um, just stay in that nice little insulated spot and just wait it out. Pacific tree frogs eat insects like spiders, <laughs> flies, beetles, and ants and other insects. The pre um, predators are snakes, sunfish, and bluegills. They are found on ground but mostly live in trees. They go in the water to smooth their skin so that they do not dry up. They have sticky pads on their fingers so that they can climb trees. And there's one Pacific tree frog is known as the red spotted tree frog. One tip, if you go next to a little stream in the afternoon when the sun is rising, you can hear frogs. Most species of frogs in Utah are not as loud. They're very, like, they have a very high chirping sound, um, which means that they don't need to bubble out their throat to get the really deep sound. Um, so most of them, you can see frogs, like, if you look at pretty much any kind of frog that makes noise, you, when you watch their throat, it'll kind of move up and down um, as they make sound. But since most of the ones in Utah have a higher chirp, they don't have the same kind of deep bubbling throat like a bullfrog like we usually think of um, but yeah if it has a lower uh, a lower voice basically a lower call um, then it'll have that same puffing out of the throat hi i'm going to tell you about four insects and four spiders split into two different groups so i've split them into two groups there's the non-blood sucking and the blood sucking. I'll do the non-blood sucking first. They're the bees, the ants, the spit bug, the spit bug, and the potato bug. And then next is the non-blood sucking. The non, no, the blood sucking. The blood sucking is the spiders, the, sp the spiders, and one insect. There, the Carolina wool spider, the hobo spider, the black widow, and the barn funnel weaver, and last of all, the mosquito. This has been four insects and four spiders and split into two different groups. Um, so there's different kinds of groups that uh, we sort animals into. Spiders are arachnids. Um, and they are also in the same group as uh, what's called a horseshoe crab. It's a kind of um, little shielded ocean critter and um, ocean spiders as well. Those are all in the same group. Um, but as you kind of make the groups bigger, they'll be 
more and more relatable. Like eventually insects and arachnids are in the same group in that they both have exoskeletons and segmented bodies. Um, but uh, yeah, the, the smallest group of the arachnids is just the horseshoe crabs, the spiders, and the sea spiders. Well, they have very similar body types. They both have segmented bodies, um, where spiders have two segments, insects have three. Um, they have segmented legs, which means that they just have different parts in their legs, so their legs kind of look similar. And they both have exoskeletons, which means their skeletons on the outside. Um, so they look pretty similar, but they're actually very different. They are actually neither. They belong to a different group called isopods, um, and they're actually closer related to crustaceans, like crabs or shrimp. Um, they're kind of like a land version of those. So they're in a totally different group from insects and arachnids.